Welcome to USAID's Kitchen Sink, a food loss and waste podcast. I'm your producer, Nika Larian. 30 to 40% of the food that is produced is either lost or wasted, contributing to a global food crisis with over 800 million going to bed hungry. Listen on as USAID experts speak with researchers and development professionals to explore solutions to this critical issue that demands a kitchen sink approach. When it comes to climate, food security, and food system sustainability, we have no time to waste. Thanks to tuning in to USAID's Kitchen Sink, a food loss and waste podcast. My name is Nika Larian, food loss and waste advisor at USAID and producer of this podcast. Today, I will be speaking with Adil Daniel, Food Security and Water Stewardship Coordinator of the Food and Markets Program of WWF Pakistan. We will be discussing the work of WWF Pakistan and what they have done to measure food loss and waste and inform policy. So thank you for joining me, Adil. Can you please introduce yourself? Uh, Hello, well, uh, my name is Adil Daniel. I'm the coordinator uh, for food security and water stewardship at the WWF of Pakistan. Uh, I joined this uh, organization back in 2019 and uh, worked on uh, various projects. Uh, the prime project which, uh, which actually set the ground was uh, food loss and waste in the hospitality sector and later in continuation work on uh, different projects which was also related to raising awareness and uh, providing some kind of evidence that uh, a policy is being uh, introduced uh, for the uh, private and public sector. Yeah. Thank you for that introduction and thank you for agreeing to speak with us today. So we're going to dive right into our questions. So obviously there is um, a big emphasis on the Target Measure Act approach and measurement is a key element of that. So can you share the work that WWF Pakistan did to conduct baseline measurements of food loss and waste? Uh, Well, uh, this was the first project in uh, the Food and Markets program, which was uh, directly dealing with food losses and wastage. So. As a starting point, what we did was uh, uh, we actually selected four major cities of uh, Pakistan, uh, which uh, has the major food, you can say, consumption rates. First one was Lahore, Islamabad, Karachi, and Peshawar. So what we did was we uh, visited different farmers markets, open markets, retailers, distributors, and uh, then developed some questionnaires for the hospitality sector, including restaurants, uh, hotels, and even uh, roadside restaurants as well. So we asked the hotel or restaurant managers different questions. Uh, So what is their consumption pattern, how they procure food, and how they store it, and uh, such kind of thing. So the results were very attractive, as we we all know that 40% is being lost throughout the supply chain. but uh, we selected two commodities first of all first one was tomato and the other one was rice Uh, tomato is uh, uh, used uh, in the pakistani cuisines in a lot of quantity and uh, we actually worked on how this is stored uh, how it is distributed after being harvested from uh, uh, the farmers uh, to the retailers and distributors and uh, what kind of a packaging material they are using uh, uh, for the storage. Uh, So we found out that most of the tomato, uh, depending upon the perishability and how fragile that fruit or vegetable is, uh, in Pakistan, the most common practice is to store them in wooden crates and uh, wrap them with some uh, newspaper. So the uh, and uh, major losses were found there when uh, they were being loaded into the uh, trucks or lorries. Uh, they cannot handle the pressure and the fruit uh, get, uh, you can say, ruptured. And from there, it is also a food safety hazard and uh, you can say a source of contamination for other fruits uh, within the crates. So we found out that in the uh, tomato supply chain, there were like uh, 12 to 13% losses. 
before it reaches to the you can say consumer and in case of rice uh, it was found out that uh, throughout the milling process throughout the harvesting and different kind of things which are involved uh, for preparing a, a, a grain of rice uh, we found out that it, it, it was around 20 percent losses or more uh, because it uh, the in pakistan what they do is uh, they as, as in uh, get the uh, rice grain in the form of a sack, which is around 40 kg, uh, mostly in size, uh, from where that the, the, the storekeeper uh, uh, distributes it to the consumers in the form of uh, open packings or other stuff as well. So there were losses found out and at that stage as well. So this is the whole scenario, how food is being distributed, specifically in case of tomato, and rice. Thank you for sharing that. It's it's really interesting to to learn more about measuring those losses and waste, especially by by commodity. And and thank you for making the connection between food safety and food loss and waste. That's one that we explore quite often on this podcast, and of course, a very important one. I do have a follow up question for you um, on that point. The the measurements were they done? through the surveys that you mentioned, or were you actually able to do any measurements of weights of food that were being discarded? Uh, well, as far as the losses are concerned, we did surveys and uh, we also did some measurements uh, at the farm level and uh, you can say uh, at the market level as well. And most importantly, uh, as you all know that uh, wastage, uh, I believe that it, it cannot be measured uh, because there are various other uh, things mixed in that as well, in, in the food, uh, in the prepared food. So we discussed this matter with the hospitality sector individuals. Uh, we measure the wastage. We ask the cooks and chefs that how much tomato or rice they consume on a daily basis. And we weigh that uh, as in uh, the, uh, the produce or the consumed uh, consume, uh, food. And then we uh, come up with some data that that was around like 20 to 23 percent in case of prepared food wastage. Thank you for that additional detail. So we've we've covered measure. Let's go to target and act. And of course, a key component of that is is policy and advocacy work. So can you share what WWF has been working on to inform food loss and waste policy? Yes, sure. <clears throat> uh, in Pakistan, uh, for the information of our audience, that uh, as far as our uh, project interventions are concerned, we surveyed four cities, work with the with the local, you can say, waste management company and the hospitality sector as well. We found out that uh, there was no intact waste management system, and all the waste, uh, unsegregated, unsegregated waste goes directly into the landfill and uh, there is no pre-segregation uh, there is only open dumping so uh, in my city lahore uh, specifically talking about lahore uh, then we found out that there are no you can say food loss or waste policy in pakistan as well uh, there is a, a discussion going on uh, that uh, they will work on some excess food mechanism uh, for the wastage part, uh, but uh, it is not being implementing yet. Implemented yet, so that's it. So we started uh, working on uh, we, as we have already done a, a small piece of work on tomato and the rice supply chain. So uh, we, as a team, worked on this initiative and developed a small policy brief uh, for the private and public sector and. Uh, it, uh, although it is not implemented or being in, uh, being worked on it, but uh, we have done so far that we have worked on uh, the policy for losses in case of tomato and rice supply chain. And uh, we are in progress of working on the food waste policy as well. Excellent. Thank you for sharing those different policy briefs. Well, I'd 
Obviously, WWF Pakistan has been doing some really incredible work on food loss and waste. So I'd like to just open the floor for you to talk about some of the activities that have been conducted by WWF Pakistan to address food loss and waste. Uh, yes, uh, we have a very diverse program uh, as far as food and markets program is concerned. Uh, we are working with the cotton farmers. Uh, we are working with uh, uh, women entrepreneurs as well. Uh, we are working with cotton pickers as well. We are improving the livelihood as well. And food loss and waste is a very small component uh, in the program. Uh, though it is kind of a you can a, a starting point for us to work on it. Uh, we found out that uh, this is the area in which uh, food and markets can work uh, for the improvement in, uh, you can say, waste management, uh, organic waste management. And uh, currently, we are developing some, uh, any, uh, you can say, proposals so that uh, we can uh, upscale uh, this food loss and waste in, uh, in Pakistan and come up with a, a, a very impactful study that uh, that could be uh, that could lay the foundation for policy reforms uh, in Pakistan. Yeah. Well, thank you for for sharing those priorities of WWF Pakistan, and I I look forward to hearing more of of the studies and activities that you conduct. But thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us today, Adil. It was really great to learn uh, what's been going on in your country to address food loss and waste. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in to USAID's Kitchen Sink. This podcast was produced by Nika Larian and is organized by the USAID Food Loss and Waste Community of Practice co-chairs, Ahmed Kablan and Anne Vaughn. Additional thanks goes to Feed the Future, the US government's global food security initiative and the USAID Center for Nutrition.